probably been a while. Three Jace, three Liliana, Goyf, Snapcasters, Vendillion Click, all the usual suspects as far as spells go. Force of Will, Counterspell, Spell Pierce, Inquisition, Brainstorm, Preordain. Darwin Castle, 6-4, tall guy. You might not know it by looking at him right there, but uh, a tall guy, one of the first people to really show up on the Pro Tour and show people what was what. Yeah. And looks like Ross run, won the roll, leads off with Trop. Darwin Castle counters with Island Preordain. Now, Ross Merriam's deck also uh, has a little bit of a landstill aspect. No actual standstill, but he does have two life from the loam to go with two Mistress Factory, a Creeping Tar Pit, the Wastelands. I was going to, when you said you had a, a landstill aspect, bristle and shake my fist at the deck list. I'm really glad to hear he does not have standstill. Right. Zero standstill. That card used to be very, very good in Legacy. Now it's just uh, I like it in a, I like it in aggressive decks. If you're a aggro control deck, I like standstill. If you're not, there is a reason that Drew Levin and Jerry Thompson took it out of their controlling blue-white deck a while back because it's just not good in control decks. Sorry, people, that uh, have liked it for years. Yeah. So there's Darwin. You can see trusty Batman shirt. Is it trusty Batman? Oh, it's it's a trusty Batman. Okay. Scalding Tarn, and he passes the turn. This is the end of turn brainstorm, where the end of turn brainstorm is actually okay. There is a fetch land to make it work. Yep. Ross will put two back and then presumably shuffle them away, unless they're all very, very good. Both players uh, are going to be pretty deliberate here because both know that one wrong brainstorm, one wrong ponder can easily spell death. In the blue on blue mirror, you cannot afford to squander even a single card manipulation spell. One of the reasons that the library manipulation is so important for these decks is that oftentimes you're working with very tight mana, so having enough mana is very important, but then having too much mana just means that you're going to fall behind the powerful spells. Right. So balancing your spells with your mana is a huge part of what makes um, you know this format work. But then also, a lot of these decks have very narrow cards. Take a gander at most bug control lists, and you're going to see a ton of cards that are completely dead in certain matchups. Right. Innocent Blood, Ghastly Devise, Diabolic Edict, Pernicious Deed, all of these are just uh, not that strong against a lot of the decks in the field. Goyf, one of three Goyfs in the main deck, one other Tarmogoyf in the sideboard. Yep, that Tarmogoyf currently a 3-4. We have Instant, we have Sorcery, we have Land. Ancient Tomb for Darwin Castle. He fetches no Stifle in uh, this bug list. This is not a, a Team America style Tomb Stalker list. This is a more controlling, slow, no him to Turok stylist. Three Force of Will is going to be um, probably a real liability here. He wants four in a matchup where his opponent can just bright, put down a Gristlebrand and then take over. Right, and it's actually really surprising to me that Ross doesn't even have the fourth in his sideboard. He has actually very few anti-combo cards in this sideboard here. Mostly uh, his his sideboard cards are more to shore up creature decks and permanent base decks. Given the way that this deck looks, my prediction is that Darwin is going to 2-0 this in easy fashion. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. Sneak attack. Ooh, there's a sneak. Ross Do you have a spell pierce? Do you have a force of will? Ross Do you have a daze? Love to be able to spell pierce. No it. dazes in Ross's build. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. It resolves. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> Ross is in trouble. Assuming Darwin has one of his four gristle, brand, gristle brands or four Emrakuls, uh, Ross is not in good shape. He has Diabolic Edict to kill Emrakul, but nothing will stop the drawing power of Gristlebrand. And here is where I think the game goes away for Ross. Darwin telling me that... Uh, so I believe six of the matches he played, he didn't feel like he was playing Magic. He felt like his opponent was just kind of sitting there, and uh, he just was winning. Right. And, you know, that's the ever-present threat of these combo decks on Legacy. If 
the com well if the players don't respect the combo decks, they'll just walk all over him. Activating the sneak attack. Uh, <laughs> Gristle oh, brand. That's I, the one Ross does not want to see. I predict we're going to see um, seven life spent by Darwin right now. Mm-hmm. I also predict we're going to see Ross entering the scoop phase very soon. Edicts. Oh, wow, Let's here's the see. one edict. I don't think it even matters. Probably not. Darwin should be able to find an Emrakul here. Or a Spell, spell pierce. pierce. That's just fine. Yep. Let's see if seven cards... He can only get seven cards right now. God... If you played when Trix was around, you know what it feels like to have Force of Will and then a draw seven. <laughs> it's such an absurd feeling. Oh yeah. my god. The difference between Gristlebrand and Jingataxis, Gristlebrand gets to do it right away. Jingataxis waiting till the end of the turn, that really, really was a limiting factor. Oh yeah, most certainly. So here they are, here are his seven. Looks like they might be having a question for a judge here. Maybe just Dar no. Nope. Uh, Darwin was just looking at his seven, seeing what his options were. I'm looking at uh, Russ Miriam's sideboard, <laughs> seeing what his options are. Yep, there's the scoop phase for Russ Miriam. Let's see what he has. I think he's going to bring in Vendillion Click, Thoughtseize, Flusterstorm, and he might just because he's got a bunch of stuff that is not good might bring in Maelstrom Pulse just to potentially break a sneak attack that gets into play without the extra red. And I also think he's going to bring in Tarmogoyf just because he's going to want to have another possibility for a clock. Right. I definitely agree with all of that. Uh, he has so many cards he can take out. Ghastly Demise, Pernicious Deed, Innocent Blood, even Life from the Lone is super unimpressive in this matchup. He just won't have the time he needs to leverage it. I mean, getting that Creeping Tar Pit, that doesn't do anything. As for Darwin, what's he having a sideboard? Um, Darwin, he's got Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast just to start. <laughs> These are the first of the spells that are good against Ross. And after that, I mean, I don't think that he needs to really do anything else in this matchup. No. Um, he's already so well set up. One of the reasons he's so good Three Spell Pierce, three Misdirection, four Force of Will. Right. I mean, all he has to do is get a Gristlebrand into play, and the game crumples for his controlling opponent. Yeah, this deck plays a whopping seven pitch spells, seven pitch counters, which is just an amazing number. More than I've seen a Legacy deck play in Quite a while. years. Yeah. Now, Darwin might be bringing in Leyline of Sancted here just because he's not sure how many discard spells Ross Merriam has. He might put him on more of like a bug deck with him to Torok and the full set of... Thoughtseize Inquisition and stuff like that. That's certainly possible. Um, I, I know uh, Darwin is one of the people that he's liable, just in his play style, to do one of two things. Either be a little conservative or be really wild. Hmm. And uh, I don't think this is going to be a moment where he goes wild. I don't see any reason to. I mean, yeah. he won game one in such easy fashion. Uh, he has to think that he's really favored against, uh, against Ross's deck here. I mean... I was playing bug control against Darwin when Darwin 5-0'd me. The only thing that I could see being bad with uh, with this for Darwin is if Darwin just is overconfident because of how badly he crushed me and then how badly he crushed Ross here game one. Um, it's possible he might, you know, be playful with the sideboard, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has no reason to be Yeah, there. well, Darwin is somebody that he gained a reputation on the Pro Tour for winning with strange plays and strange cards. So... I mean, I don't think that he'll do anything like that here, but he's got that kind of, uh, you know, approach to the game. Right. Now, let's just hope that his playing against you doesn't influence <laughs> uh, this, because I'm sure your deck list looked nothing like Ross Mary's. Uh, you know, actually, it had a lot in common. Really? It had a, it had okay. a lot in common. Um, the the big difference is I had more control elements. Right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and he's still 5 with you. Yeah. Wow. So, Ross Miriam does not look like a happy man there. He knows he has to come back. He knows he has to win this match to top eight. Darwin needs a win and then a little bit of luck for his tiebreakers yeah. to improve. The path here for Ross is simple. 
Um, a thought seize for a control element from Darwin, followed by a Tarmogoyf, and then holding back on Counterspell Force of Will and hoping that that works. Of course, that particular set of plays, very, very hard to actually acquire. Right. It really needs a subpar draw from Darwin. Well, if, if Ross gets that draw, he won't need the subpar draw from Darwin, but it will still require an incredible low chance for that whole confluence of cards to happen. Right. Now, the Sneak and Show deck, if you're unfamiliar, it doesn't play a heck of a lot of lands. Darwin has 19 here plus 4 Lotus Petal. So he definitely has a ton of deck manipulation, very few land count, or a very small land count, so very easy for him to uh, assemble his combo. I'm going to have to say, uh, sorry Ross, I'm going to root for Darwin Castle here. You know, I'm going to go with Ross Merriam. More of a, a hometown type of guy. He's from the Hartford area, pretty close to Worcester. Cool. Been top eighting a lot of PTQs recently. Played in uh, Pro Tour Barcelona, I want to say. Oh, congratulations to Ross for that uh, Pro Tour attendance and yep. finish. So fetching up Underground Sea. Inquisition. It's a fair card here. Uh, it's part perhaps going to get rid of a either a spell pierce, a, uh, a show and tell. Those are some possibilities. Darwin reading the card. He's reading this because <laughs> I'm willing to bet he has not seen this card before. Probably not. Darwin uh, used to probably know every single card legal in every single format. Nowadays, though, does not devote a heck of a lot of time to magic. This is true as he tries to decide what to do about that. At the same time, he's still got a love for the game. You know, here we were in um, o at Columbus for Origins, and he was running an Ascension tournament for Gary Games, and at the same time, he had a whole bunch of Magic cards, a, a Sharpie, and he was proxying up standard lists <laughs> yeah. because he's got the fever again. He's not playing a ton, but I think this game gets in your blood, and it pretty much takes something really crazy for you to let go. Oh, definitely. And right now, Darwin's walking away from the table with the judge. I'm pretty sure his question right now is, uh, if I misdirect the Inquisition of Kozilek back to Ross, who chooses? Hi. I actually think it's uh, more that he is going to say, if I misdirect it, um, is he required to choose one? That too, yeah. And I believe the answer is he is required. He is required, but Ross will get to choose oh, yes. the Inquisition. Ross will do the choosing. Right. Darwin, not going to be familiar with this interaction because, like you mentioned earlier in the day, duress says target opponent. Yeah. And now the judge asking to see the Inquisition. Just making sure. Yep. Takes about five seconds to read the card, but you can ruin an entire player's tournament if yep. you get the wrong ruling. And that has happened. Bad rulings are a part of uh, the game in the same way that <laughs> um, bugs can be a part of Magic Online at times. <laughs> Here we go, misdirection, and it's losing, I think a force oil is being tossed aside, and Ross is like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to get rid of something. Yep. Let's see what you got. And Ross will have to reveal his hand. Is that a uh, brainstorm? I can't quite tell the way Ross has it laid out. Yeah, let's zoom in on that there. I believe it's a brainstorm, a counterspell, wasteland, trop, island. Yeah. That's actually a, a really awesome misdirection then for Darwin yeah, Castle. It is. Which, wow. Whichever card Ross takes, uh, Darwin has to be happy oh, about it. Oh, boy. Boy, that is just painful. Two of Ross's best cards for this matchup. Yep. He only has two counter spells in his deck. Three force, two counter, two spell pierce. That's his counter spell sweep. And he tosses the counter spell. And why? That is a lot of land in his hand. And right. uh, the brainstorm can at least give him some potential for action. Though he doesn't have a fetch land yet, he's assuming he'll hit one here. Goodbye, Force of Will from Darwin Castle in order to turn that around on Ross. Wow. Darwin draws. And let's see, Ancient Tomb Lotus Petal Show and Tell? <laughs> Talk about living the dream. The coast is clear. Yeah. <laughs> what is he going to do? <laughs> play a wasteland. <laughs> Put a wasteland in the play. Land go. <laughs> That's my guess. <laughs> uh, second land for Ross. Yep, and he wisely doesn't use that brainstorm yet. He doesn't have to. He's going to wait till he draws a fetch land here. 
I mean, or he could next turn just do it and see. Right. You know, the main phase brainstorm just to push for greed. A lot of people cling to the maxim that greed is a bad call. That's usually the case unless the payoffs are so good that it's worth it. And uh, in my experience in Legacy, the payoffs are often so good. This is not the case in most other formats. It's only generally the case in Vintage. Well, there we got a Wasteland. In Vintage and in Legacy. Especially when this matchup is so bad for Ross. Yeah. Sometimes he just has to take a few risks. Okay. Wasteland on the source. <laughs> oh, we're going to see a response. Get a fetch. Yep, and I have to imagine this will be intuition from Darwin. There are two intuitions in Darwin's uh, deck. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. That, this is interesting. I'm not liking that. No, me neither. Brainstorm is the type of card that's so valuable for Darwin. Uh, it's power to shuffle cards away. Also, just to hide cards from Ross Merriam's discard spells. Yeah, and I mean, Darwin doesn't have any um, way to stop this wasteland. So this Brainstorm is a very is turning that Brainstorm into a suboptimal Brainstorm. Right. This is like oh, this will probably be draw two, put one back in effect because he'll have to untap and draw a card he doesn't particularly want. So if you're just joining us, I'm Zach Hall in the booth with Adrian Sullivan. Hello. And we are coming to you live round nine of nine, the last round of Swiss at Star City Open Worcester, legacy portion. We're watching Darwin Castle on the left battle, Ross Merriam on the right, and Darwin in the middle of resolving a brainstorm. Up a game. Wasteland on the stack, targeting Ancient Tomb right now. And Darwin, finding the two he wants to put back. There He's going to have to draw one of them. Right. And Brainstorm to the yard. And then Ancient Tomb to the yard. Yeah, I was going to presume that was going to be an intuition. Right. That's the only thing that, to me, makes sense to cast him. Yeah. Darwin has other plans, though. We'll see what he has this turn. There's a City of Traitors. <laughs> city of Traitors. So Ancient Tomb gets replaced. Ooh, Le a Lotus, Lotus Petal. And we'll see if he has a sneak attack. There sneak. it is. I mean, when you are just trying to assemble the potential combo... There's nothing wrong with uh, using your mana efficiently. Right. It's not as valuable over a long game, but a short game, it is potentially better in the next turn alone. Yep, definitely It's true. just two turns down the line, it's probably a little worse. Basically, this play by Darwin will, in effect, have gotten him one card deeper into his deck with that Brainstorm. So Ross Merriam, with an end of turn brainstorm, he realizes he has to find some sort of spell to deal with that sneak attack. He's trying to find a Maelstrom Pulse. He's or trying a to Maelstrom find... Pulse. Yeah, there's... Or a Maelstrom Pulse. Really not Times one has. in the deck. Wow. Trying to find a Thoughtseize, trying to find... Uh, I mean, I really like Cross and Grip in, uh, in, this, in this archetype. It's a good sideboard card. It's very versatile. Yeah, definitely. It's always nice to have those catch-alls in your sideboard, especially in a format as vast as Legacy, where you can play against any deck from Enchantress to Combo Elves to Counter Sliver. Tarmogoyf, go. And now basically we're at the position, does Darwin have anything? Yeah, any Emrakul, any Gristlebrand will spell doom for Ross Merriam here. I think he has it. Yep, here it is. Gristlebrand. Hey! Activate. Darwin goes to 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All good girls go to heaven. <laughs> and we'll see if Darwin goes to the top eight with this win. Now, Darwin is not guaranteed a top eight with this. No, it's not just at all. Uh, very good for him. Yep, he'll he'll be right in the middle of the pack at X one and one, and he has. And to that wow. is it, Darwin. A quick two zero. And Ross Merriam shows the fluster storm, but that doesn't count as sneak attack when it's already in play. And that's the game. Congratulations, Darwin Castle moves to 
seven one and one in this Legacy Open. Right. Ross Merriam, good showing. Oh, look seven at that! Two. You could see on Ross uh, Ross Mer Merriam's face, just a real disappointment. That yeah. was, you know, what can you do? Well, there was a slight shrug of the shoulders. I mean, yeah, this is a really bad matchup. Hope